come to me. All those of you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. As we come together for communion today, we can only imagine what it must have been like in the upper room. As the disciples sat together, possibly at a table, most likely on the floor, and ate and talked together. That wasn't unusual for them, of course, but this night had particular significance. Tensions were high. They were tired. Judas was even more agitated than normal. And Jesus, well, he'd been saying and doing some strange things. In one moment, he had washed their feet. And in another, he spoke of one amongst their group betraying him. As the candles flickered and cast shadows on the walls around them, there was something strange in the air. The scent of death, of sadness, of fear and uncertainty. As they ate, Jesus took the bread and the wine and he, he shared it as he spoke to them. His words seemed to carry even more weight than normal and yet they wouldn't fully understand their significance until the days and the weeks and the months ahead. Jesus, in that meal, was leaving them a gift. He was leaving you and I a gift. The bread and wine was a gift of remembrance. The opportunity to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross as he gave up his body. His blood was poured out because of his love for us, because of his desire to give each and every one of us the opportunity for a right relationship with God. The bread and the wine was also a gift of a moment to pause. In the busyness of the everyday, this meal represents a chance to stop, to reflect, to refocus on what really matters, living our lives with God at the center, seeking him first in all that we do. The bread and the wine was also a gift of hope. When times were hard, when they were troubled, it reminded the disciples and it reminds us that the victory has been won. That whatever mistakes we might have made, however far away we might have wandered, God's love has the power to cross any divide. And the bread and the wine too was a gift of community. I have no doubt that as the apostles 
and travelled far and wide sharing the gospel. Whenever they shared in this meal, their hearts and their minds would have been brought back to the upper room. A reminder that their faith gave them the opportunity to be opportunity to be one with Jesus Christ and also to be one with each other. As we share in this meal today, we too are offered the gift of remembrance. The gift of a moment to pause and refocus. The gift of hope amidst whatever may be going on in our lives. And the gift of community. The gift of being part of the biggest and best family known to man. Are you tired? burned out, worn out on religion, come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest, says Jesus. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Here is the table set for our special meal. The bread and the wine prepared and ready to serve. Today, we are his disciples, his friends. Each one of us is welcome. How amazing it is to be loved and wanted even when we know we've not been perfect. How wonderful it is to come and find rest and peace in the presence of our Saviour. Such 
to share in the bread and the wine. Let us pray together. God of love, thank you for strengthening and nourishing us. Thank you for persisting with us, for forgiving us, for giving us another chance to do what is right. Thank you for loving us with a never failing love. Thank you for the incredible gift of your son, Jesus, who lived and died and was raised again so that we might be able to know you personally. So that we might know life in the way that you intended it for us. Thank you that we can come together as your family. That we can find peace in you as we remember all that you are and all that you do for us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, we're given a glimpse into the guidance that he gave the early church to ensure that they were able to share in this meal and everything that it represents. Here's what he wrote. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so we come to share in this meal and to receive the peace that comes with it. We take the bread and we break it just as Jesus did for his disciples. This is my body, Jesus said, which is for you. Do this in memory of me. Let us eat together Jesus' body broken for you and for me.
And then again, just as, just as Jesus did on that first meal with his disciples, he took the cup after supper. And so we take the wine just like he did. Jesus said, this cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink together, united in the death and resurrection of our Saviour, Jesus. Feel those thoughts digging into 
As our time together draws to a close, let us pray once more together. Loving and compassionate God, God of infinite goodness and mercy, we worship and thank you. Teach us to live the lives you desire for us. Bless us with the desire for your justice for those who are poor. Bless us with the voice to speak for the voiceless. Bless us with the opportunity to be your hands and your feet in this world. And in these moments, in the quiet, we lift to you the situations where we see her. where we see suffering. And we lift to you the names of the individuals who are isolated, troubled, who feel alone. And Lord, just as we find rest in your presence, may they too find rest in your presence. Bless us as we seek to point others towards you in all that we do, so that they too may know your unforced rhythms of grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so we come to the end of our time of communion together. May the Lord bless you and keep you in the days ahead. Amen. <laughs>